Hello again, everyone. Um, I'm going to have a, 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 another go with one of the uh, goodies that was sent by Tony from Stamps by Me. This one is the Layering Stencil and Matching Die Set. Now, I've been wanting to get a layered stencil set for ages. In fact, it was the one thing I was looking for when I went to Alexandra Palace to a craft show recently. But I didn't like anything that I saw there. But I think this... It's fabulous and I had a play this morning and that's what I made. It is in fact very close to the colours I saw here but not having done stencils before I thought it would be the easiest way for me to sort of feel my way into it. So what I did was this. I looked at each um, stencil in turn. They're all ordered numbers one two three four five they've got registration hearts in each corner so that you can make sure that you get them in the right place um but i just looked at what it was actually an image of to decide what color i wanted to do it so with this one the first one as you can see is let's pick it up carefully this flower these flowers and those like that so I'm going to go with different colours this time from that because I thought I don't want an identical card. So rather than having bluish flowers, this time I want to have yellowish flowers. So I chose fossilised amber and scattered straw. Those are my two colours for the flowers. So. I then thought about the two greens and the two greens I want to have, because if you can see here, there's a, a basic colour and a deeper shade, just giving the, the shading at the bottom of each pair of, le of, pepper, of leaves. So I've got bundled sage and peeled paint. I thought those two might be all right. I don't, looking at them, I am wondering. Um... Um, yeah, looking at my, my chart here, I think I think they probably will be okay. I think that's probably why I picked them looking at the chart. And for the, men, the, the centres of the flowers this time, I thought I'd use frayed burlap, a brown. So, I don't know how it's going to go. We'll see. Get that out of the way. Here are my five stencils, all in order. I'm going to put them at the back there. And the way that I wanted to do my um, registering or keeping the card and stencil in the correct position was to use a scoreboard. This is an old stamping up one I've got that I don't actually use much because it's in inches and most of the measurements I do are in um, metric and centimetres. So I have, uh, obviously this is ridged so so that I don't get any ridges if, if put at all on the um, card I can just put a piece of ordinary cardboard in to make it smooth this is just the back piece of card from a, a sheet of um, a pack of watercolor paper so I haven't got my a piece of paper ready to, to put it onto so I'll just chop one of those up quickly now. There we go. I probably won't be playing music and speeding this up because <laughs> people didn't like it. They were very, very scared when the music suddenly came. I didn't know what I was doing. I was trying my best, but we'll see. Okay, by putting this piece of paper that I'm going to do the stenciling onto right in the corner. All I need to do is to put my stencil into the corner, the right side up, obviously, and it should be absolutely right. If I do the same thing with every stencil, everything should be aligned. So, as with the first one, I started with the lighter blue, the brighter blue there, and put the, the deeper one over the top. So I'm going to start with the lighter of the two yellows, which is scattered straw. I haven't got um, dedicated brushes 
um, for all, I haven't written them all down, but I think this one will be quite a good one to use. It's a new one I've just got from Craft Stash. So, onto my brush. Let's do the flowers. These are lovely brushes, actually, from Craft Stash. They've only just come. Most of my other ones are just from Amazon. Right. We have bright yellow flowers this time. It's going to be really jolly. I probably hope it will when it turns out. We'll see. And this is all obviously um, Distress Oxide um, inks. I'm just keeping my fingers on here just to make sure that the, the stencil is, is pushed into the corner the whole time so that it is in exactly the right place. If you didn't have a... Um, anything well, with a right angle corner like this you could use as stamping platform whatever but you, you could actually draw a little p pencil heart in the corner onto your the card that you're inking and make sure that the next stencil you put down lines up pretty color isn't that love scattered straw such a warm color Okay, let's see what the next one is. Two. Number two is the leaves. Here's the picture. Let's have a look so we can see. It's the leaves and it's the whole of the leaves. So this one is going to be the lighter of the two colours for the leaves. And the lighter colour I have is bundled sage. So I do have a brush with its name on bundled sage let's do this one next okay both sheets are into the corner and here we go this is lovely to do this really lovely I find it really relaxing there was one little bit there that looked like it was um sticking up a little bit from where I wiped it just now so I went in the direction that it was not sticking up so that it didn't go underneath it. I have to be careful when I wipe it next time. This is a pretty shade too isn't it? Isn't it lovely? Okay I think maybe um, I'll learn the nuances of stenciling in, in layers soon because I think, you know, you can put different weights of, of ink throughout the stencil and I think that would be quite sort of part of part of the art of doing it, really. So that's the next layer. Oh, it's pretty, isn't it? Right, that's two. Next is number three. Now, number three is the overlay of the flowers. So this is the one I wanted the deeper shade of yellow so this is the fossilized amber this is my fossilized amber brush okay let's try this it's interesting i don't know if i've got made a good choice here or not we'll see can you see what i mean by it? you can get variances of color just by how you use the brush and I think that's probably all to the good. Just a bit more here and just finishing up at the top. There we go. That's the fossilized amber. Oh it's pretty isn't it? Now then Number four is the deeper shade. It's for the it's the leaves and it's the deeper shade of green. Right. Are we in nine? I hope so. So for the deeper shade of green, I've chosen peeled paint. And I haven't got a brush for that one here, have I? Let me just find it. Oh, peeled paint. Peeled paint. Got it. Here's my peeled paint one. Okay. Just gently. 
Okay, I don't want too much. There we go. Let me see what this one looks like. Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? Keep putting on the wrong side. And the last one is just the centres. Can you see all the tiny little the centres of the flowers? And for that one, I thought I would choose frayed burlap. Frayed burlap. Haven't labelled that one yet, so here we go. Frayed burlap. It's terribly well. There we go. Practically finished. There we go. And it's a bit like a surprise every time when you lift the stencil up to, to see the effect that the, the previous colour has had. So let's have a look at this. Whoa, isn't that pretty? Look at that. That is so pretty. Oh, now if I wish to, and what I did before was to cut this out with the matching stencil, which is just here. Um, this does move a little bit. There is a bit of give in it. So I think that when you're um, going to put it through the machine the best thing to do is to make sure that you tape it down properly so that it cuts where where you want it to cut so I'm just going to pop it onto my lower cutting plate and get out some low tack tape here we go position this end properly and to pop on some low tack tape Have a look here. It is quite difficult making sure that dies do do fit where you want them to fit. How are we doing there? Let's put some more tape on. There we go. I think we'll hope for the best for this. I'll just pop it through the machine. pretty isn't it do you think now what I did for this one was to cut some double-sided foam sheet this stuff I bought it in, in craft stash and this die will cut through that beautifully and um, well let me should I do it let me just do it take it off here Right, place it on one end of the piece of foam sheet and cut. There we go. Look just beautifully it's amazing stuff well that's stuck down isn't it because the piece of foam tape is still there not foam tape it's low tack right let's get this off some more low tack there okay pop that at the back 
And here is my foam garland ready to put the one on the top now the way i did that th this one it was to do it a bit at a time so take off the the top um layer part part way don't take it right off because we can it'll get stuck and then start to add this to the top get it lined up like this Let's do it a little at a time. Now I'll pull this off a bit more. Just line it up. There we go. Ripped off there. And the same thing applies for when you, you come to stick it down. Um, if you don't if you don't take it off all at once, just do it a little at a time then you won't find yourself getting stuck with bits that have grabbed a bit of card before you're ready for it to do so. There we go. Look, isn't that pretty? There. Now all that I have to do to put it onto another piece of card is just to peel off that layer. As I said, I would do one half at a time and then you can pull it out from underneath. So what a different effect just by using different colors. This is cool, this is warm. Um, what I did for the backdrop was to use a really old Spellbinders embossing fold. I had to use this in my switch because obviously my Spellbinders Platinum 6 isn't big enough. But it's a double-sided um, embossing plate, this one. It's got regular Swiss dots there. If you do it this way, you get like four little dots in a, in a diamond shape. So, um, I've not seen these for years. I don't know if they still make them or what, but I thought it made a nice a nice backdrop for this. And the sentiment, of course, is the, the beautiful that I used the other day from this, from this same set. Hello, beautiful. You see? Hello, beautiful. And I just cut that one from Glitter Card and glued the back with this glue pen. Um, if you want to, to do very fine um, sentiments like this and you want to glue them, the easiest way to do it is to, once you've cut it out from the piece of card, put it back in the piece of card um, and then you could, it'll stay still while you add the glue and just pop it on. A simple card, lovely bit of stenciling and thank you so much Stamps by Me. I think it's fab. I'll be playing with this quite a lot. So, as ever, thanks so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Um, thank you for liking the videos when you look at them. And um, also thank you so much, all those lovely people who've, who've very, very kindly bought me coffee too. Most grateful. I am I'm really, really uh, grateful to you. Thank you so much.